Good morning, church family. Uh, this is Pastor Michelle Gerges, and I'm going to be bringing the word this morning. I'm in um, a beautiful canyon above Wenatchee. I'm out camping with my husband and my dog, um, and we just went out this morning and let the car take us, and I just feel inspired to stop right here and bring you God's word this morning. And I hope what I'm going to teach on this morning is going to give you hope and encouragement and peace to your soul and to your spirit. Because we're living in some pretty crazy times. And sometimes, or a lot of times, people get, you know, pretty upset by what is going on in the world. Um, with, you know, wars and rumors of wars, inflation. Um, people are having a hard time paying their bills. Um, there's so much political correctness. Everybody's on edge of what they can do and can't do according to the world. And that's going to be my emphasis is according to the world. Because I want you to know, I'm going to be reading um, a lot and we're going to do this um, study out of Matthew 10. And the verses are 21 through 34. And it says, Jesus did not come to bring peace, but division. He brought a truth provoking love that divides. And sometimes that's hard for us to swallow. Um, there's definitely a side of being a believer, being a follower of Jesus, that is love and peace and joy, the fruits of the spirit. But there's also another side, there's justice, there's truth. Um, sometimes when we speak the truth, um, we're told that we're judging. And that's just a very um, convenient thing for people to say because it's a trigger word. If someone says to you, don't judge me, then the person backs off. When Jesus spoke the truth all the time and divided people, upset people, made them angry, made them not understand, but it was for a reason. And because we are in this world, but we are not of this world, we are passing through. And we get our map for this life, how to live our lives through the living word of God. Not what the news says, not what the newspapers tell us, not what our neighbors tell us, but what the word of God tells us. And if you have the news on all the time, blasting, um, and all you hear is that negativity, of course it's gonna upset you. Yes, we need to be informed, but not ab absorbed by what is going on in this world because Jesus has so much more for us. When he said to follow him, he said we have to sell out and then it comes with a cost. Um, you can go back a few sermons ago and Pastor Kyle Slusher talked about something similar to what I'm talking about today. But the Lord put this on my heart probably three months ago and I was just waiting for the right time to, che to teach it. Jesus hated the religious leaders. He wants our hearts and not our performance. The religious leaders of his time were always about performing and ritual and customs and they had no relationship with the living God. Everything was at a distance and that's not what he wants. He wants our hearts and that's why he battled with the religious leaders of his time. So if sometimes we battle with the traditional denominations and religions of our time, is it any surprise? I feel like if everything that we do, um, the people that we know, acquaintances, um, just the people we come in contact with, if everybody approves of what we're doing, then I promise you we're not doing what Jesus would do because he upset a lot of people. And that is how change happens. Your soul and spirit needs to be stirred for change to happen. He doesn't care about how much money we have, about our education, um, how religious we are, how many times we go to church. He wants our inside clean and devoted to him. 
that's what he wants. That is what he desires. Because when that happens and we have an authentic, true relationship with him, then our light should shine and we will have an impact on this world. So um, there's a lot of people that don't go to church or to Christian gatherings, small groups, um, and they have all kinds of excuses. Um, people in the church are hypocrites. Well, people in the world are hypocrites. Uh, people in the church judge me. People in the world judge you. Take a step back and it's an excuse because it's sometimes easier. And I, I will tell you as a leader, if I just let my flesh tell me, people are messy and sometimes people are hard to deal with. So our flesh, our human side wants to pull away. And we kind of want to live on an island, do what we want to do, stay in our little world, but that's not where we provoke change. And for people to come to know Jesus, we have to get outside the walls of our house and outside the walls of our little world. And we need to step into the world so that we can have an impact on the world. Sometimes even Christian households are divided. It, it, it happens because part of the house are believers and the other half isn't. Again, we shouldn't be surprised by that. It's almost, um, if, if we're salt, if we're um, light and that light shines on the darkness, that can upset people at times because they might wanna stay in their darkness and it stirs them up. And sometimes people aren't ready to be stirred up. Why does the world hate Jesus? I'm gonna read um, a little bit from the Newsboys song, Guilty. When did it become incorrect to speak the truth about life and death? When his life gives us all eternity. When did it become breaking a rule to say, your, to say your name out loud in school? Even if it gets me convicted, I'll fall on my knees with my hands lifted. If serving you is against the law of man, if living out my faith in you is banned, I'll stand right before the jury because I want to be guilty. That's how we need to be living with reckless abandonment because we should be speaking the truth of what Jesus taught us in his word, not going along with what the world tells us. You're allowed to say this. You're not allowed to say that. We don't live by those rules, Christians. We don't. Let's not let the chaos of the world trouble our hearts. This was predicted. The chaos in this world that is happening now was predicted. It has to happen so we can move forward to the next step. It has to happen. But God is in the midst of the chaos. He always is. He has a bigger plan than we can understand. And he will bring it to fruition in his time. We follow the King of Kings, not the world and its trends and whims. The world's always changing the rules, always. One thing is right in 1990, it's not right in 2024. But this word is the same today, yesterday, and forever. It never changes, it never gets outdated. God is in the midst of the chaos. We follow the King of Kings, not the world and its trends and whims. We are living in incredibly exciting times. We can turn it around. Rather than scary times, we're living in exciting times. We might be living in the gen generation that sees Jesus return. We might be right on the edge of that, but things are getting shaken up so that they can change and so that people that don't know Christ will come to know him. Let's embrace these times. Time is short. Let's not sleep and be lazy, but let's be doing God's work that is eternal because there are souls ripe for the harvest. That is the biggest thing that we are living for is for souls 
to come to know Jesus. I'm going to read um, a little bit out of Matthew, and we're going to start in chapter 10, verse 21. So this is some of the stuff that's predicted, and this is not to scare us, but to actually put our spirits at peace, because if Jesus said it was going to happen, then it's part of the plan, and we are his children. He watches over us, and he takes care of us, and when bad things happen and things come our way because they will, they do if we're believers or not, he'll walk with us. He'll hold our hand. He'll love on us. He'll give us hope and a future as we walk through it. Brother will betray brother to death and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. So he said, "If are we above our Lord and Savior Jesus? He was hated. Is it going to be any different for us? It's okay. We need to get our skin a little thicker. Keep our soft hearts, but our thick skin. I worked in court for over 30 years, and that's how I did it. I didn't absorb all the negative that happened, I kept my heart soft, but you gotta keep your outside a little thick so that um, you can withstand when these things happen. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly, I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough to be for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head, of, okay, I'm gonna skip a little bit of this because um, I wanna read the rest. I'm gonna come back in, in verse 27. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So right there, that's telling me I should not worry what man thinks, what other people think of me. If I'm doing what I believe God's will is through his word, then I'm right where I need to be. And I don't need to fear. And you don't need to fear. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet one of them will fall to the ground, yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside of your father's care. So even when a sparrow falls, the Lord knows and he cares. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Can't remember how many times the Bible says, do not be afraid, but look it up because it's a lot. So he knew we would be inherently, instinctively afraid, but he tells us not to be afraid. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. So we need to not be ashamed of Jesus, ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because if we acknowledge him before others, he will acknowledge us before his Father. But whoever dis disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a, but a sword. And he says, I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Sometimes this happens. This is sometimes a hard truth to accept but it is the truth. So I just challenge you to examine your own heart, that when you want to lash out and feel, if someone brings the truth to you about something and you want to lash out and say, don't judge me, maybe be a little introspective. All of us need to be and take a look at ourselves and what's going on because truth cuts like a sword, but sometimes we need it. We need to be disciplined in that way. 
So again, it comes back to souls are ripe for the harvest. But how do we get to the harvest? If we stay in our world and don't get out of our world, we don't even know about the harvest. We don't know that there's a lost and dying world out there. We just hear about it, but we don't know about it. This is a great opportunity, the times we are living in. Look at the times we are living in. We have a huge opportunity to impact the world. The more the darkness, the brighter the light is going to shine. Pastor Mark has a saying, and Ted and I just love it because it is so true. It is never about what we think it's about. So all the things in life, the mundane things, the day-to-day -day things, having to have a meeting with somebody, having something going on, you know, we always think, oh, I don't want to have to deal with this. I, you know, I don't want to meet that stranger. Um, I don't want to have coffee with this friend. But it's never about the situation or the action. It's always about the person and where their soul is, where their eternity is. God gives us opportunities every single day. It can be in the grocery store. It can be getting gas, just having conversation with someone. You will be amazed and surprised at the opportunities God will give you if you just get outside yourself. We all do it. Again, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm calling myself out because sometimes I'm busy. I'm rushing. I'm tired. I have all the excuses that exist in this world, but I try to remember Pastor Mark saying, it is never about what we think it is about. It's always about what God has, what God has for that other person, because we're saved. We're going to spend eternity with him, but there are countless millions that aren't if we don't open our mouth and speak the truth to them. And sometimes we plant seeds. A lot of times, and I'll be the first to say I can get discouraged at times. I'll invest a lot of time into someone and I feel like I'm not really seeing any fruit from it. But God reminds me that there's many um, steps when we um, plant seeds in, in the physical world, when we plant um, things in our garden, you, you know, there's seeds and then there's the watering and then there's just the time for things to start to sprout and the harvest is much later. And sometimes we don't get to see the harvest, probably most of the time. Sometimes we do, God gives us those nuggets, but usually we're in one of those steps before. We're planting seeds, we're watering seeds, we're waiting and praying and calling on him. And then someone else can benefit from the harvest. But it doesn't mean that every step along the way wasn't just as important. So I am going to encourage you to not be stuck because that's probably apathy, being stuck, um, being in like a low grade depression. All of those things will keep you from the goodness of God and all that he has for you. Living in a world that is too small within our own brains, we will become the accusers of ourselves. We will become the accuser, accusers of others, and we won't live for what God's full potential is for us. And I'm going to read something that hit me really hard. And so I really want you to think about this. And as I'm reading it, I don't want you to be thinking about somebody else that this might be, because we're really good at doing that, right? When something is, is hard or uncomfortable, we can think of somebody else's name that fits there but we don't want to look at ourselves. But I'm going to encourage you. As I read it, I'm going to read it like I'm reading it to myself. And I encourage you to do the same. And I'm, I'm going to close with this and leave you with this. It is really hard to believe, but there are some people who do not want to be delivered and set free from their oppression. Just as there are some who do not want to be healed. I know that sounds harsh, but let me finish reading this and hear me out because there is extreme truth to this. Many times they come to find their identity in these things, in their oppression, in their sickness. They 
find their identity in these things. And even though it is bad, they find a strange comfort in their situation. Then they have a fear of the uncertainty of their freedom. Just as the Israelites continually said, we should go back to Egypt because they were scared. They didn't know what the future had held while they were in the wilderness headed to the promised land. They would have been happy to return to slavery as opposed to the freedom because even though it was brutal, there was a certainty in it. So even while they were slaves and it was horrible, they still knew what each day would look like. And there was some kind of twisted comfort in that. We do the same thing. We get comfortable in our sickness, in our oppression. And it's we might say with our mouth that we want change, but we do nothing to encourage that change. In the wilderness, they were facing the unknown and there was no comfort to them in that uncertainty. When we are bound by certain restrictions, then accountability and responsibility has limits. Excuses are always available and handy. That hit me so hard because, let me read that one more time. When we are bound by certain restrictions, sickness, oppression, depression, anxiety, all those things, then accountability and responsibility has limits. We, we have excuses because we live in these things. We feel that we are justified in our excuses. Excuses are always available and handy. In our freedom, we are more accountable and responsible for our choices and outcomes. And that is why some people don't choose freedom because they don't want to be accountable and responsible for their choices and their outcomes. And though many cry out that they want that freedom, they do not really want the responsibility that comes with it to be healed, to be set free. Many times they come to find their identity in these things. And even though it is bad, they find a, a, a strange comfort in it. So today the Lord would call you and ask you to trust in him for his healing for you, for your body, for your mind, for your soul, for your spirit. He would ask you to trust him that you would be set free from oppression, depression, anxiety, fear, all those negative things. He's calling you out of that. And I know with it comes responsibility and that will um, very much um, limit your excuses. But he doesn't want us to live in, his, in our excuses. He wants us to live free. When we live free, we can impact others. We have to be well before we can impact others. If I was a non-believer, which I was until I was 17 years old, um, if I met a Christian and that person was complaining, was fearful, um, was always negative, in a bad mood, ranting, I, wouldn't, I would not want what they had. We are the living representatives of Jesus Christ himself. So let's be positive. Let's be encouraging. Let's get outside the small world we live in so we can impact others because we are living in extremely exciting times. So let's get on board. Let's get a place on that train and let's ride through life filled with all his goodness. God bless you.